Hi, and welcome again to Professor Black's History. Thanks for joining us. Hey, listen, uh, we've received some comments, and we want to uh, tell you that your comments are always welcome. So if you have comments about our, um, our performance or what we do, please let us know. Uh, we had a comment that a person was saying that they thought it might be best if they could uh, actually see the person talking and uh, see the expressions and things like that. Uh, but the reason we don't do it, or the reason that we're in the shadows, is because, uh, one, it's symbolic. Symbolic of the history that we talk about, which is kind of in the shadows. Even though it's in books, it's not in history textbooks like it should be. And then the other thing is, we want the focus to be on the people that we talk about totally. Uh, it's not about the speaker, it's about the people and the names that we give you to look up. Uh, you know, people of all ages always uh, attempt to do a lot of things in life, but most people who really, really want to do it, uh, get things done, uh, they have a way of finding, finding a way of doing it. Uh, the, uh, it's not where you come from that counts. Understand that. What counts is where you end up. And the perfect example of that is our person today, Bridget Biddy Mason. Bridget Biddy Mason is a fantastic story. Uh, if you know Oprah Winfrey or Tyler uh, Perry, you better tell them to uh, get on this story and make a movie because she is a fantastic, outstanding woman. Uh, Biddy Mason was born a slave in Mississippi, and uh, she actually uh, was a slave who learned how to do midwifery, uh, which was like a nurse. Um, the, the other slaves taught her all these remedies and medicines. So she did that on the uh, plantation, and her owner, Robert Smith, wanted to move to Utah. He became a Mormon and decided to move his uh, family and all of his property and his slaves to Utah. So he moved all, all of them to Utah, and Benny Mason walked the whole way. She was in charge of the cattle, so she had to walk behind the cattle. Uh, so she walked all the way from Mississippi to Utah. And uh, then she also walked from Utah to California when he decided that he wanted to move to California um, in 1851. Now here's the thing. When you get to California in 1851, California had been admitted to the United States as a free state, which meant that slavery was illegal. So Biddy Mason sued for her freedom. She sued for the freedom of herself and her two daughters, and many people say that all of Robert Smith's slaves uh, were set free because of that case. Uh, she moved to Los Angeles and became a nurse or working for a doctor there in Los Angeles. Uh, and she was a very frugal person, so she liked to save her money. She saved her money and she worked very, very hard. She saved a lot of money and uh, she became pretty, pretty uh, wealthy or at least established with some, a great, uh, great um, uh, pool of money that she could pull from. So she um, decided that she was going to buy her some property. She bought this property in the center of Los Angeles. And she instructed her children never to get rid of that property. That property today is like in the center of the Los Angeles business district. So she must have had some kind of premonition or some kind of foresaw, uh, foreseeing or something. Uh, but she also became the first black woman to own land in Los Angeles. And uh, she sold that land, or some of that land rather, after she built a nice house on it. She sold some of that land. And on that land she put a building where she rented, proper, uh, rented offices to people. Uh, so she sold property and she became a very wealthy woman uh, of the times. Uh, she had a fortune of about $300,000 and back in the 1800s $300,000 was a lot of money. Uh, who am I fooling? That's a lot of money right now. But Biddy Mason had all this money and she didn't keep it for herself. She was a very charitable person. Uh, she uh, gave money to the poor. She uh, went to the prison, visited the prisoners a whole lot. She took them blankets and um, uh, uh, food, uh, so she was a very, very caring person. You could always see a line standing outside of her uh, house of people needing uh, some help, and she was always willing to help them. Um, she was very fluent in Spanish uh, because, of course, in Los Angeles uh, at that time, uh, a lot of uh, Hispanic people, well, to that time and now. But here's the thing the reason that they didn't want to be admitted as a slave state uh, necessarily was because. They didn't really want black people in California, but since there were so many of them uh, that ended up being there, and it's kind of ironic too because uh, many of the founding families of Los Angeles had African-American or African descent, so that's kind of uh, just a sidebar on that one. 
But Billy Mason was very influential in the business community in Los Angeles. And um, she actually became the founding member of the first African American Methodist Episcopal Church in 1872. And it was the first black church in Los Angeles. And uh, she also donated the la land for the church. Now, her grandson eventually uh, was, became a real estate entrepreneur. And he also became very wealthy. He was also a politician. But at one point, he was the, most, uh, the wealthiest African-American in Los Angeles. So there you have it, the story of Biddy Mason. Check her out. It's a great story. It'll make a great movie someday. And when you hear about the movie coming out, you'll remember that you heard it first right here on Professor Black's History. We'll talk to you next time.